Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, Hoshua Mashiach. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Come Out of Her, My People, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Now, I want to warn you. This broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you love truth, if you are a truth seeker, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips, but we let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're going to get right into our message on this day. There is not a person that is listening to me. If they were honest with themselves, they cannot say that they have never been jealous or envious of someone else. Even since you have been a believer, you have dealt with jealousy or envy. Don't think that you are evil because you may have dealt with jealousy or envy in the past, or you may deal with jealousy and envy at the presence. I would think that something was seriously wrong with you if you never struggle with these two twin sisters, jealousy and envy. If you have dealt with or struggle with jealousy and envy, it's a clear indication that you are normal. Jealousy and envy are a normal human occurrence. However, Yahweh's desire for us is to be totally free from both jealousy and envy. Though jealousy and envy have similarities, they are not the same. Jealousy is resentment against a rival a person enjoying success or advantage, etc., or against another success or advantage itself. Envy is a desire to have a quality, possession, or other desirable things belonging to someone else, a feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else possessions, qualities, or good fortunes. The reason that believers sometimes struggle with jealousy and envy is because of a lack of knowledge and because of immaturity. Hosea 4 and 6 declares, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, Apostle Peter wrote, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Master and Savior, Yahushua Mashiach. There are some sins that a believer can hear taught on, and they can read about those sins in the Bible. But for years, they will still struggle with them. As people mature, then they grow out of certain sins. For an example, a person can struggle with jealousy or envy, and they sincerely want to be free from these sins. They can hear these sins taught on for years, but they still struggle with one or both of these sins. They can even read in the Bible what the scripture tells us about jealousy and envy, but still struggle. That word has to become flesh. The scripture says in the beginning was the word and the word was with Elohim and the word was Elohim and the word, 
ladies and gentlemen, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Sometimes the word of Yahweh has to become a reality, has, uh, has be, uh, must become flesh in our life. It has to become alive. That word must be ignited in an individual because one may understand a certain sin is wrong. Preaching and teaching on that sin is not always the answer for prompt deliverance. Sometimes deliverance is a process of hearing about a sin, ladies and gentlemen, or sins preached and taught on for years. The seed of the word of Yahweh sometimes takes years to germinate in an individual. People don't always hear a word taught on and get immediate deliverance. Even though the Bible says he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, we can hear the word preach. We can hear the word taught. And we wonder, and we can read the scriptures ourselves in our personal studies. And we wonder, why can't we get deliverance over that sin or certain sins, ladies and gentlemen? Glory to Yahweh. But see, the word, the seed of the word must germinate in an individual. Sometimes it's a process that takes place before that word began to germinate in an individual's life. Sometime in our lives, there can be strongholds and they take longer for the word of Yahweh to break in pieces. The Bible tells us that the word of Yahweh is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Strongholds are like rocks, ladies and gentlemen, that need to be broken. Jeremiah 23 and 29 declares, Is not my word like as a fire, says Yahweh, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Ladies and gentlemen, the word of Yahweh has to chisel away at certain sins, strongholds in our life. It can be envy. It can be jealousy. These, they can, these can be strongholds. But that word, you're hearing that word preached, you, you're not free. You still struggle. You still deal with these things. But that word is chiseling away, ladies and gentlemen, at that stronghold. It's breaking the rock in pieces. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, it tells us here that Yahweh's word is like a fire. Some sins in our lives, the fire of the word consumes immediately or in a quick manner. However, some sins in our lives, it takes months and years to be totally consumed by the word of Yahweh. Many times we get discouraged and we wonder, what's wrong with me? Why can I get free from uh, this struggle in my life? All of Yahweh's people go through that, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe if you never heard no one teach it. You know, you know what's wrong with people today. The reason why many people cannot get deliverance and get free because the one that's ministering the word they're not transparent, ladies and gentlemen. We need transparency. Glory to Yahweh. Praise his holy name. In order for people to get deliverance, people need to be able to relate, amen, to the one that's bringing, amen, forth, amen, the message, ladies and gentlemen. My own personal life. Listen, I heard the word of Yahweh preached. I heard it taught, I would read myself, but I still struggle with certain sins. There were some sins that I still struggle with. I mean, for years, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't get total deliverance overnight. It was a process. The Bible says in Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this very thing, he which have begun God a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of our master 
Yahoshua Mashiach. We are all under construction. Some of us are further along under construction. We're like we're on the assembly line. Some are farther along, ladies and gentlemen. But Yahweh have begun a good work in us. He have planted a seed, and that seed, amen, sometimes take time to germinate, to, to, to take root, ladies and gentlemen, and begin to flourish, bless Yahweh in our lives. Glory to Yahweh. And so, uh, and, and sometimes we feel, man, I'm, I'm hearing the word preached, I'm hearing it taught, I'm reading, but I'm still not free from this situation. Sometimes that word has not become a uh, flesh, ladies and gentlemen, in our lives. Now, there's certain things that we heard, we heard preach, we heard talk, that we got immediately, amen, we was delivered immediately, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't have to go through that process. Bless Yahweh. But then there are some that we struggle with. And still struggle with, ladies and gentlemen. There's things that you're struggling with right now. And sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. Sometimes we can't even forgive ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to help you, amen, if I can <coughs> today. Amen. I'm not advocating sin. I'm not justifying sin. I'm not condoning sin. No, ladies and gentlemen, Yahoshua said, uh, uh, go and sin no more. He told the, that woman that was caught in the act of adultery, she, he, he told her, go and sin no more. He told the woman, the man rather, that was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, looking for deliverance, waiting for the troubling of the water to get down in that water that he could be healed. And Yahoshua came to him and told him, take up thy bed and walk. The man was instantly healed, set free, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. But Yahoshua told him, he said, go and sin no more. Least a greater thing come upon you. Yahoshua told that man, say, listen, now you think this situation that you're in, this palsy, uh, uh, you're paralyzed and you can't even move. You think this situation is tough that you deal that you was dealing with. Amen. Uh, uh, the next thing, amen, that will happen to you is death. Go and sin no more, least a greater thing happen to you. Amen. The, what can be greater than the condition that the man was in, ladies and gentlemen? Amen. Only death could be greater, amen, than that. Also, it tells us here in Jeremiah 23 and verse 29 that Yahweh's word is like a fire. Some sins in our lives, the fire of the word consumes immediately or in a quick manner. However, some sins in our lives, it takes months and even years to be totally consumed by the word of Yahweh. As a person begins to mature in Yahweh, they will begin to understand that jealousy and envy is worthless. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Worth it. it doesn't profit. It doesn't benefit nothing. Listen, envy and, sh and and jealousy does not profit nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Jealousy and envy envy doesn't accomplish anything. People waste years, exhausting time, energy, and effort on being jealous and envious of others. Being jealous and envious will not change the circumstances, ladies and gentlemen. It will not change the circumstances. Envy and jealousy, ladies and gentlemen, will not accomplish anything. It doesn't profit. It doesn't edify, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't benefit you one iota. Let me explain myself. See, what Yahweh has for you is only for you. What Yahweh has for you, it is only for you. 
And what Yahweh has for me is only for me. We must accept and embrace our purpose and destiny in life. Yahweh has already planned out our lives. He has given us different gifts and talents. <clears throat> some of us will be wealthier. Some will be less wealthier. Some of us will be more physically attractive. Some will be less attractive. Some will have charisma. Some will lack charisma. Some will have better jobs than others, ladies and gentlemen. They will have better jobs than others, and others will, will not have as better uh, jobs, ladies and gentlemen. Then others will be more intelligent than others. Somebody else going to be more intelligent than you. I don't care how intelligent you, intelligent you are. Someone else going to be more intelligent than you. I don't care how eloquent you are, how, how uh, good you can speak, your, uh, your speaking skills, ladies and gentlemen, how articulate you are. Someone else will be better than you. Some will speak better than others. There will always be people more physical, attractive than you, more wealthier than you, more intelligent than you, more affluent and influential than you. There will always be people more talented and gifted than you. And we cannot change this fact. We must be content with our strengths and weaknesses. When we understand that Yahweh created us, he constructed or devised us all differently. Life would be very bored if we all were equal in talents, gifts, ability, finances, personalities, physicality, etc., we must be happy how the Most High made us until we embrace how Yahweh fash fashioned and devised us. Then and only we won't walk with resentment against the success of others and won't feel discontented, longing, aroused by someone else's possession, qualities, or good fortunes. Today, plastic surgery, Botox, using uh, Botox used, body lifts, buttocks enhancements, breast implants, etc., are on the rise. Why? Are these things on the rise? People are not content with how the Most High constructed them. The Bible tells us we are His workmanship, created and Mashiach Yahoshua, ladies and gentlemen. It's Yahweh that worketh in us both to will and to do His good pleasure. We are His sculpture. Ladies and gentlemen, he's chiseling us. He's making us into his masterpiece that he purposed for our life. Every one of us is a different masterpiece. They tell me that snowflakes, not one snowflake is designed like the other. We're like snowflakes, ladies and gentlemen. We are all different. We are fearfully and wonderfully made every one of us we are fearfully and wonderfully made ladies and gentlemen glory to Yahweh amen for the truth so today plastic surgery Botox use body lifts buttock enhancements breast implants etc are on the rise people are not content with how the most high constructed them Envy plays a big role in this industry today because people envy others' physical attractions 
and qualities. They spend billions of dollars a year trying to match or outdo others. <coughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, they spend billions of dollars a year trying to match or outdo others. People not happy the way Yahweh made them. Amen. They, they, they don't like their nose. They don't like their lips. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't like the chin. They don't like the breasts that Yahweh gave them. They don't like their buttocks. Ladies and gentlemen, people having body lifts. They don't like how Yahweh constructed them. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't like Yahweh's masterpiece. So they want to help Yahweh. They want to help Yahweh. But see, when you learn to be content, amen, and the way that Yahweh made you, then you will realize that jealousy and envy is nonsense. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. The Bible says that envy is a work of the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. In other words, we are born with envy. Envy has its origins from our flesh. Envy doesn't originate from Satan. A person can have envy without any demonic influence because envy is a work of the flesh. It's not a work of of Satan is not a manifestation of Satan and his whores. It's a manifestation of the flesh. And I'll tell you another thing. That Satan is not your greatest enemy. His whores, his demons are not our greatest enemy. The one that we look at in that mirror is our greatest enemy. Paul said, in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. We take this old nasty flesh with us everywhere we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this old nasty flesh, this flesh is our worst enemy. If we can control the flesh, the devil, ladies and gentlemen, will be simple to deal with. The Bible says, listen, submit yourselves to Elohim, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Did you hear that? If we submit ourselves to Yahweh, resist the devil, he'll flee. See, the enemy has to use the flesh. This fleshly nature. He has to use this stuff here. He's a spirit. The devil is a spirit. So he has to utilize flesh. This is why the Bible says, be angry but sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. And it tells us, and give not, neither give place to the devil. We cannot give ourselves to the devil. If we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So Satan is a spirit and he's looking for flesh to utilize. He wants human flesh more than anything else. The most intelligent creature on Yahweh's planet, humans. And man can do more damage than any animal or beast can ever do because of his intelligence. Satan really want to use man. Just like Yahweh say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visitest him. Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor and set all things under your hand, Yahweh. And same thing with Satan. Amen. He wants to use man. He wants to use man for his service. 
Oh, bless Yahweh. But if we walk in the spirit, guess what? He can never use us. He can never use us. We have to die daily. We have to die to self. Bless the name of Yahweh. The Bible say, they that of, of Yahweh have crucified the flesh with the affections in the, the lust. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21. Listen carefully. Apostle Paul wrote, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. Did you see that? Witchcraft is a work of the flesh. Did you know that? It originates from the flesh. Not Satan. It's a work of the flesh. Hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Now, let me read this to you in the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, I want to draw your attention to chapter number 50. One. Now look what it says here. Amen. In Psalms chapter number 51, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I want to draw your attention uh, to verse 5. Now look at David said. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. We all was shaping in sin, iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me, ladies and gentlemen. And so many things, many sins, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't originate from the devil. They originate from our flesh, this atomic nature, this flesh, this flesh. Glory to Yahweh. And one of them we read to you is envy. Envying. Glory to Yahweh. We see here that envying is a work of the flesh. Envy is so closely associated with jealousy. Immolation, we read, also is a work of the flesh. Immolation here in Galatians 5 and 20 means to try to make one jealous. That's what immolation means, to try to make someone jealous. Therefore, I conclude that jealousy is also a work of the flesh. Apostle Paul lists 17 works of the flesh. In verse 21, Apostle Paul said, and such like, showing us here that there are other works of the flesh that Apostle Paul did not include on this list. Such like these, he said. Amen. And such like. So there's other ones like these 17 uh, works of the flesh that Paul did not, ladies and gentlemen, list. The Apostle Paul said, in other sins such like the 17 sins or works of the flesh because jealousy is so closely associated with envy I must conclude that it also is a work of the flesh in verse 21 Apostle Paul said that they which do such things that's on this list of the works of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. So it behooves us, ladies and gentlemen, to deal with jealousy and envy. If we have it, deal with it. Don't let it harbor in your heart. You deal with that spirit because 
Jealousy and envy grows. It doesn't stay the same. It intensifies. Therefore, it doesn't pay to live in jealousy and envy because people that walk in these two works of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. We can't blame Satan for jealousy and envy because both are a work of the flesh, not a work of Satan. However, a person can give pledge to the devil. Satan and his hordes can magnify jealousy and envy in one's life. Though envy, jealousy doesn't originate from Satan, but he can magnify it, ladies and gentlemen, in our lives. Glory to Yahweh. Demons can take the jealousy and envy in one's life and feed it and make it worse than what it is. Ephesians 4 and 27 declares neither, neither give place to the devil. Jealousy and envy will spot our garments because they are a work of the flesh. The Messiah will present unto himself a church or bride without spot or blemish. Jude 23, Jude wrote, and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating, listen to this, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Jealousy and envy will spot our garments, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 19 concerning our garments. We have to preserve our garments and not allow them to be spotted, ladies and gentlemen, by the flesh. Look what it says here in Revelation chapter number 19 and verses number Seven. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. She made, she got all the blemishes and spots and wrinkles out, ladies and gentlemen. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed and fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Bless Yahweh. Ephesians 5 and 27, the uh, Apostle Paul wrote that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it may be holy and without blemish. His church, his bride, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, jealousy and envy will spot our garments, ladies and gentlemen. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 34 through 35, King Solomon wrote, For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content. Though thou givest many gifts, Proverbs 6 and 34 through 35, and its context is making reference to a husband that believed that his wife cheated on him. A jealous husband is the rage of a man. Rage is violent, uncontrollable anger. A jealous husband will exhibit violent uncontrollable anger. Nothing will stop him from taking out vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, money, ladies and gentlemen, money will not pacify him. Neither will he rest content though thou givest many gifts. He is not going to rest until he get back the people who violated him. I don't care what you try to give him to appease him, it won't work. Now, he may be an adulterer himself, but he don't want his wife to commit adultery, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. He will go in a rage. He will go ballistic, ladies and gentlemen. He will have fits.
There's nothing you can do to appease him. Nothing you do will work. Many people are in their graves today by being murdered by people that were consumed by jealousy. Jealousy doesn't stay the same. It continues to grow uncontrollable. This is why we should not allow jealousy to harbor in our hearts. We need to deal with it. When a person is in a rage, they do things on impulse, but afterwards they are sorry. But sorry is to sorry is too late because the damage has already been done, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes the damage can be murder. Amen. Killing someone. The grave, Psalms, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6, declares, For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire which have a most vehement flame. <clears throat> the grave is cruel in the sense that it will confine and restrict a person who have died. A person that is jealous, jealousy will incarcerate them or take control, possession, or imprison them. Also, jealousy burns like coals of fire. Coals burn for a long time. Also, Jealousy burns for a long time and it has a vehement flame. Jealousy has a vehement flame. You don't want to get around jealous people, ladies and gentlemen, because they can burn you up. They may not be envious or jealous against you, but their flames can affect you. Glory to Yahweh. The Bible says a root of bitterness sprang up and many be defiled. You can become a product of your environment by just being around people that are jealous and envious. Now, a person can be jealous and envious at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. They can be jealous and envious at the same time. Glory to Yahweh. Let's turn over another leaf. Now let's look at envy. Proverbs 14 and 30 declares, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. What is a sound heart? A sound heart is a heart that is according to Yahweh's heart. The heart is, in the mind is used the majority of times simultaneously, ladies and gentlemen, in the scriptures. The heart and mind is the same and most of the time when we read in scripture, the heart is referring to the mind and the mind is referring to the heart. Proverbs 23 and 7 declares, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 4 and 23 declares, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it is the issues of life. Now, let me explain myself. Medical science has proven how one thinks has an effect over his physical health. Medical science have proven it. How you think has profound effects on your health, your physical health, ladies and gentlemen. Many people die premature because they are hateful, evil, forward, mean, bitter, full of anger, full of cursings and Bitterness, ladies and gentlemen. Proverbs 14 and 30 declares a sound heart 
is the life of the flesh, a heart that continuously think on these things. What several things are true, what several things are honest, what several things are just, what several things are pure, what several things are lovely, and what several things are good report. If it be any virtue or praise, the scripture says in Philippians 4 and 8, think on these things. Thinking on these things give long life and good physical health. Proverbs 14 and 30 also says, <clears throat> but envy the rottenness of the bones. Bone cancer causes the bones to rot. A envious person can cause bone cancer and other health conditions. All sickness doesn't come from Satan. Poor eating habits because people don't observe the dietary law. A lack of ex exercise, etc. But some sickness, disease, and health issues, premature death comes from how we think. <clears throat> Did you hear me? Let me say that again. But some sickness, disease, and health issues, premature death comes from how we think and from walking in the flesh. Are you listening to me? Proverbs 17 and 22, Solomon wrote, A merry heart do as good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A joyful, positive outlook is beneficial to our physical health. A hopeless, negative feeling, however, can drain us, zap our energy, and even take away our will to get well. Proverbs 27 and 4 declares, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Proverbs 27 and 4 declares, Wrath is cruel. And anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? To be cruel is to willfully cause pain or suffering to others. To be brutal. A man's wrath is cruel. Then anger is outrageous. Outrageous means to be shockingly bad or excessive. Anger is horrible. It's terrible itself. Wrath is worse than anger. Ladies and gentlemen, anger is outrageous. Wrath is cruel. Glory to Yahweh. The scripture says, but who is able to stand before envy? Envy, ladies and gentlemen, is worse than wrath and anger. It's worse than wrath and anger. Wrath and anger is horrible. Both of them are horrible, ladies and gentlemen. But envy is worse than them both. Glory to Yahweh. Envy, ladies and gentlemen, is a desire to have a quality possession or other desirable things belonging to someone else and a feeling of discontent or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possession, qualities, or good fortune. You're resentful. You wish you had what someone else had. Their possessions, it could be qualities, it could be their wife, it can be their husband, it can be their vehicle, it can be their home, it can be their job, it can be their wealth, ladies and gentlemen. Cain murdered his brother, Abel, because of envy. Joseph brothers attempt to kill him 
as a result of envy. Saul sought to slay David as a result of envy. The Messiah was nailed to a tree as a result of envy of the religious leaders, the chief priests, the high priests, the elders, ladies and gentlemen, was envious of Yahushua. They was envious of his preaching, his teaching. They were envious of the miracles he performed. They couldn't do it. They were envious because of the crowds that followed him, ladies and gentlemen. They was envy because he spoke with authority and they wanted what he had. They resented him, ladies and gentlemen. They resented him because they wanted his qualities. Huh? They wanted what he had but could not have it, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew 27, verses 17 through 18 declares, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Yahoshua, which is called Mashiach. For he knew, listen what it says, Pilate. For he knew that for Envy, they had delivered him. My goodness. Think of the preachers today that are envious of other preachers. Wish they had. I mean, resent them. That can't stand them. Hate them. They never did anything to them. Joseph didn't do anything to his, his brethren. David did nothing to Saul. Yahushua did nothing to the religious leaders, but they hated him. They moved with envy to have him put to death. That's why we have to deal with this spirit of envy and jealousy, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh is going to give you deliverance over this thing. He's going to help you. Now, let me say this. Being jealous and envious don't profit nothing. Don't profit you nothing. You can't accomplish nothing. It doesn't profit. It doesn't edify. What does it do for you? Nothing. You can't change the circumstances. So you have to embrace, ladies and gentlemen, the way that Yahweh made a person. Aren't you content the way Yahweh made you? Don't be envious because someone is more intelligent than you. Because someone is more physically attractive than you. Someone may have charisma. You don't have that charisma they have. Someone may have a better job, may be wealthier than you, live in a better community than you, live in a better home than you. Their husband may be more handsome than your husband. Their wife may be more attractive than your wife. Except what Yahweh have purpose and destined for your life. Accept it. Just be the best you can be. Just be the best you can be. That's all you can do. We don't all have the same talents. Some have one, some have two, some have five. We don't all, Yahweh didn't dis distribute to us all the same talents. We don't all have the same gifts. Some of us are more gifted. Some of us are more talented. Uh, talented. Some of us are more intelligent. Ladies and gentlemen, than us. But if we're content the way Yahweh devised us, constructed us, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, then you won't worry about other people if they're better than you, if they, can, they have better abilities than you. you. You don't worry about that. What Yahweh has for you is for you. And what Yahweh has for them is for them. 
And you can't take what Yahweh has from them. And they can't take what Yahweh has for you. Just embrace it. Be content with how Yahweh divides you. Let me close this. In Titus chapter 3 verse 3 declares, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts, And pledges living in malice and envy, <clears throat> hateful, look at that, and hating one another. That's how we used to live. We shouldn't live like that anymore. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Mashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Because you've been baptized in water in the name of Yahushua and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with initial evidence of speaking in tongues. And you read that scripture. You said, I read that I'm a new creature, but I'm still dealing with envy. I'm still dealing with jealousy. What's wrong with me? Am I, am I saved? Amen. Why am I dealing with jealousy? Because he said, if I be in him, I'm a new creature. Let me explain that to you. Listen. Salvation is a process. You don't get delivered overnight. It's a process, my friend. Amen. Uh, you become a new creature. We, we, we are uh, regenerated. The Bible said not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration. You see, it's a process. Washing, he's washing us. Washing of regeneration. And listen, and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That word renewing means renovating. That's uh, Titus 3 and 5. Yahweh is, we're all under construction. We can look like dilapidated. But Yahweh is going to perfect that which concerns us. Scripture tells us we have to bring forth fruit and patience. Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves because of immaturity, a lack of knowledge. We don't understand, ladies and gentlemen, certain things. But as we mature, Yahweh will begin to give us the insight. Galatians 5 and 26 declares, let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Well, we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Yahweh's amen servant, Reginald M. Graham. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. We would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. Also, we like to hear your thoughts. Amen. Uh, write those comments. We like to interact with you, correspond with you. Amen. Also, you can email us if you need to talk to us in privacy. Ladies and gentlemen, we would love to talk to you. I'm an accessible preacher. Lord, I'm not going to put you off. Amen. I, I, I can be touched by the feelings of people infirmities, ladies and gentlemen. Some preachers, they untouchable. You can't touch them. You can't get close to them. Amen. But we are accessible preachers. If you need to talk, we're here for you. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen. We just thank Yahweh for what he is doing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Peace and blessings. Shalom.